Joining me now is a woman who's in isolation, unfortunately, quarantine back in Australia. She is Bellator's own Janae Harding. Janae, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. The first time we did this, I think I had to take my daughter horseback riding today. I have to do the same, this time not as time constrained. Uh, we weren't running behind schedule. We were all good. You obviously didn't have much to do. We'll get to the whole quarantine, but we'll talk the fight first, and then we'll have some fun later on. Uh, the fight itself was going completely your way. You were dictating the pace. You were utilizing your striking the best I've ever seen. Uh, you even took her to the ground when you wanted to take her to the ground, uh, but an up kick sort of sealed the deal. I want to talk about what you took away from it in terms of positivity, uh, not the loss itself. So have you had a chance to rewatch the fight and, and what did you take away from it? Yeah, I mean, like I was rewatching the fight probably, I'd say like within the hour of, of like leaving the cage. Yeah. Um, and it may be like, I think that night alone, like Renato and I watched it maybe like six or seven times on repeat, just like at different points and certain things. And yeah, it, I mean, obviously, initially, I can't say that I was super positive about it, especially like walking out of the cage. I was um, I was definitely like cursing the sport and I was extremely upset um, just in a general sense, just mainly because I was just frustrated. I was frustrated that that small moment especially how the momentum felt like obviously not just that I was winning but it felt like I was winning it felt like the momentum was changing even if they had scored that first round against me which I highly doubt they would have um it still felt like the second and third round if it was going to go the distance go my way if not I was going to finish it before then so um the feeling of like momentum moving forward and then just like completely stunting that momentum was just like so strange and um I guess for that reason, I was super frustrated and I was upset, um, et cetera, et cetera. And then I think like due to a lot of things that have happened in my life, I think I, I knew we went up to the room, we were all sitting around talking about it, obviously watching it, et cetera, et cetera. And then I think within like half an hour, I was like, screw this. Like, I'm not like, obviously I need to sit back and critique this performance, but I'm not going to spend too much energy negatively, um, just constantly going over it and, and almost giving myself a headache. So um, I guess because I knew I was like, well, for whatever reason, this has happened. I don't know what that reason is yet, but I'm just going to trust that the journey is what it needs to be. And this needed to happen for whatever reason. And I needed to be maybe humbled or whatever it was um, in this performance to move forward and, and become the best version of myself and become the champion later on down the track. And I think like having that, like having those things happen in the past gave me the opportunity to apply that mindset. And um, I just, from there, I just sort of like, like obviously enjoyed my time um over in the states I kept sort of every now and again watching it um because i'm obsessive and at the end of the day I'm an athlete um so randomly trying to find little keys and just understand it more understand what i could have improved on um especially in that first round there's a few holes that um i definitely could have done although i did adjust some of those in the second round um i could have done a lot more and then um yeah just taking the lessons like taking the lessons for what it was enjoying the fact that um at the end of the day i'm healthy i'm happy and i'm surrounded by beautiful people so that's um i guess like first and foremost the most important thing and eventually we'll see why i needed this loss and um and i'll hopefully yeah of course bounce back a lot stronger Definitely. Now, you, you, we did speak about mindset and, and mental training and stuff like that the last time we spoke. It sounds like you've put that into play. You thought, ah, forget it, whatever. But walking out of the cage, you said frustration was, was something that came up. Was this sort of the most difficult loss to digest? Yeah, definitely one off. Yeah, I, I would say I think like the rest of my performances, I can always kind of amount to – maybe something in my personal life that I should have changed, something in my preparation that I should have changed, or maybe a lacking in skill of some variety. Whereas this one, it was sort of just like, I finally felt like I was on top of the things that I had been trying to get on top of from those last losses. And I, I was like, finally, I'm present in my mental state. I've made leaps and bounds 
physically and skill wise as well um and like all these things i didn't really see many gaps my personal life is clear and calm and drama free and um really making like the right decisions there and and i mean like i have a healthy home life and everything so i was just sort of like i don't really know what to blame it on in a sense like i don't really know what I can say that I did wrong specifically. Obviously, I made a, a lack of judgment, um, but that's a very small, minor detail. And I think a lot of things that a lot of people are saying, um, I mean, one very like renowned coach said to me, it's not like you have to reinvent the wheel or anything. And I was like, I know, like, it's so like, he's like, I feel for you. Cause I was like, but yeah, I was like, yeah, I don't need to change everything. I literally just need to change this like tiny little thing. And and unfortunately, that's how MMA is, and a tiny, small adjustment will make the difference in a in a win or a loss. But I mean, um, generally, it was a lot of factors that sort of created that one situation, and and I just need to, you know, apply my knowledge of what I did wrong. I'll obviously never do that again. Like that's for sure. <laughs> well, they do say any given day, any fighter could really theoretically beat any other fighter, right? A, a punch could land, a kick could land, like it did. I got to ask, as a jiu-jitsu guy, watching it go to the ground, she locks up the triangle. You look to be defending almost perfectly until you sat to your butt to put your feet to her armpits. I know that's, that is a defense, uh, yeah, maybe a white belt defense, but, <laughs> yeah. but like, what, were you, what, what was going through your head when she locked in the triangle? Because you look to step over, which would have worked probably. Yeah. But, I mean, did you look back on the defense to the triangle? Like, obviously, the performance was almost impeccable standing. And then did you look at what you did defensively for that triangle and sort of nitpick it? Yeah. Like, I mean, initially, so obviously the up kick, um, like, dazed me in a sense. So initially, like the first few movements are like autopilot. And f since I kind of came to sort of more in the triangle, um, I was like, for whatever reason, panicked because because uh, I like had gone from standing up to kind kind of coming to a little bit more in the triangle. Yeah. I panicked and was like, I'm going the wrong way. Like I must automatically be going the wrong way for whatever reason. And then for that reason, it was just like, I kind of was rushing decisions. I was like quickly like, oh, I have to, I have to go that way. And then I was like, no, that's the wrong way. And then, um, and then I, for whatever reason was like, oh, if it's the wrong way, then I must be deeper. So I must have to like use Hail Marys um, in a of sense. Of course. Or, like, you know, there's like defensive moves that, that are at the very end. Like yes. you only, just in case you get stuck deep in for whatever reason things are and for whatever reason I did the foot thing, but I wasn't really that deep in the triangle yet. It wasn't even really like locked up, but I think cause I do with like a leg around my neck. I was like, Oh, I must be in this triangle. Yeah. And then, they, yeah, like quickly went to the, and then I changed it. Obviously, like I went to my, why are you doing that? And then <laughs> got that, like deep in the triangle and I went the wrong way. And I was just like, I was rushing because my brain was just like not going fast enough. And, um, everything was kind of like in slow motion in a sense. Cause I came to in the triangle and I was like, Oh, I need to make the right decision. And I put too much pressure on myself and I made the wrong one. Like I should have almost gone, like kept going in autopilot probably. Cause I probably, you wouldn't have finished locking it up because it wasn't even that solidly. Yeah. Locked. It was like, but I'd fallen so perfectly into the I know triangle. and myself as a as a as a media member I'm not supposed to be judgmental or, or biased or anything like that but I chat with you before the event you know sent sent you messages and stuff and I thought oh man she's almost out she's almost out I was like yes and then I was like Fah. <laughs> but you know what like you said it happened it's over and done with it's out the window but you did post a poll the other day, and it looks like your fans and people on the internet want you to fight Leah again. Is is does that go through your mind? Like, is that a fight that you would like next again? Do you think yeah. Leah would want it? I don't think so. No. no. <laughs> um, I, um, and I think that's kind of why initially, like, obviously, as soon as the fight happened, a whole lot of people were like, "We need a rematch," blah blah blah, and everyone was saying it, and I was like, "I'm not going to push for this because I know." One, I highly doubt that Bellator will give it to me, not because they're biased or anything, but 
um, they like to protect their people in a sense and, and move them forward. And now she's got momentum going forward and she's heading towards the top five. They'll probably need more opponents for those top five players as well. Cause I know a lot of those um, girls in the, like the one to four um, kind of don't really have a lot of options in the way of matchups that make sense. So having a, a number five now will kind of give them that um, a new face in the number five as per se. And then, um, for that reason, I kind of like never push for it. And then I did the, just cause the rankings and I like to be interactive on my Instagram. I did who would you guys like me to fight next? And um, yeah, quite a lot of people really want to see that rematch. And I think that'll be, I'm not really going to push it that much. I just did that one story, obviously just to make it known that I would love that fight. And I would love that fight more than anything. I like, I'm obviously not really showing how much I would love to run it back, but because I know <laughs> realistic and i know that i can't push for things that aren't gonna happen and maybe we both will have one or two more fights and then we'll run it back or maybe we'll both have one fight and then run it back i highly doubt it'll be immediate um and i think they'll definitely one she'll maybe avoid me and two they'll probably protect her from me because nine times out of ten like a lot of people have said this is not just my words i beat her um in a fight so it's sort of just like one of those things you have to be realistic about um, the things you put energy into, and I would really love that fight, but I highly doubt that it's going to come to pass anytime soon. But it looks like, I mean, you've already beaten the two women that surround you above and below you in the rankings, correct? So, like, it's going to be someone out of the rankings if you're saying they're going to protect the people top five. Yeah, well, I think maybe they might give me Sinead again. I think it's something that they, because they want her to avenge that loss a lot, and it's... um. I mean, uh, not to offend anyone, but personally, I think skill-wise, Sinead's a little bit more skillful than um, Leah. So therefore, like, especially in in matchups against me, stylistically against me, um, Sinead, like, like the Sinead style kind of um, probably would, I would put more money on it. Um, so therefore, I think maybe they would, they would hopefully give me Sinead. I mean, that's definitely a matchup I wanted, again, because of how because of how it's like finished the first time but she never really had anything to offer me um for a rematch like i'm not trying to be stupid and i'm not trying to just let my ego choose these fights and matchups um ahead of me but i think she would definitely be someone now since she offers me a higher ranking spot um that i would love to fight again and and not avenge my win but just like reiterate that um i am more skillful Definitely. Now, coming out of this, uh, judging by your social media and your management social media and Ruka's social media and everybody else's social media in California, I mean, it would look like you won the fight with the amount of fun you were having because you traveled to California, you went to Ruka headquarters, you ate donuts, you had ice cream. It looks like you had an absolute blast post-fight. Yeah, I was super lucky. I had... Um, cause obviously last, my last fight was during the election. Um, COVID was going crazy over here. I usually spend a, like an extra week obviously to make the travel worth it, especially now with quarantine. I really want to do that last time, but I just sort of thought, um, to play it safe and go back home straight away. So this time I actually planned a proper trip. I knew I was going to spend a few days in um, Vegas with my manager and everything and visit a few gyms out there. And then I knew I was going to go to California, but I had no idea that this trip was going to be the way it was. And I am, um, I guess, like mainly just in an extreme state of gratitude um, for all the people that made it great, um, for one, and the gratitude of where I am at in my career. Um, being able to visit so many gyms, being invited to so many gyms. There were so many gyms I didn't even make it out to. I was training like twice a day. Um, like I fought Friday by Monday, I was training twice a day every day for like two weeks straight, which was amazing. Like for me, it was great to mentally get my um, head back in the game in a sense, um, reiterate my love with the sport and just constantly do it because I can, not because I need to or because I have to or anything. So that was really, really cool. And then obviously all the people that I met and the people that I relinked up with along the way that just really showed me, I have so many like friends. I've realized that I almost have more friends in the US than I do um, <laughs> like here where I'm at. I was like, what? Like, this is wild. But I was also lucky that a lot of people from my side of the world were overseas um, in the US at the same time as well. So we all linked up and man, it was amazing. It looked like it. How did you hook up with Ruka? Because I mean, obviously, BJ Penn was a Ruka guy. And, and that's how a lot of people got to know the company. Then they branched out into, you know, skate and all that surf and, and whatnot. And 
they're a pretty damn big company. How, how did that all link about? Yeah, like I've been with the Australian team for, I think it's about three years now, or two or three years. Um, and so I linked in through the Oz team, um, through my work actually at the time, uh, technically still work for them. Um, I worked at like a retail store for combat sports equipment and stuff. And uh, we had just bought their Ruka Sport um, on board exclusively as an Australian distributor. And um, we were just basically chatting and they were like, oh, we're looking for, um, my owner had reiterated that they were looking for a, a female um, to sponsor and stuff. And I was like, oh, well, of course, like put me forward for it. Um, and then it just so happened that, yeah, Ruka is based on the Gold Coast. That's where I'm from. That's my hometown. Um, they're linked in with like the supplement brand that I endorse, Combat CMBT. Um, and they had just started to open a gym. They, they hadn't quite opened it yet, but they were going to open a gym with um, CMBT as well and create a training facility on the Gold Coast. And then just, yeah, everything's just sort of aligned. Uh, they knew a few of my good friends that had past been sponsored by them. Um, at the time, I was kind of uh, doing strength and conditioning a lot with Tyson Pedro, who is um, another Ruka ambassador. So it was all just like all these little things kind of linked in. And then I guess over the last few years, um, we've just slowly built um, our relationship. And I am I guess I would be one of the originals in the way of like the sports ambassadors for um, the Australian team. And then, of course, I finally wanted to make my way over and uh, introduce myself to the American team. I kind of like they kind of knew who I was and. Um, a few of the guys is, are from the Australian team, so it was sort of LinkedIn, but I'd never really showed face and spent time over there. So that was definitely something that was on my bucket list. And um, doing that really worked out well because we got to get some shooting in. Um, hopefully that will come out soon. And I also obviously got to work with Perillo a, a heap and, and meet a lot of the guys. So that was amazing. Had you hit pads with Jason Perillo before? Because uh, it, it looked like you had a pretty good time. <laughs> Yeah, um, never. And I know that like, yeah, a lot of the time you need to like work into a flow with a new coach. Um, but I found it really easy with Perulo, which was really cool. I'd only really seen obviously stuff on social media and videos and whatnot. And um, I found it extremely beneficial technically. And as well as that, I, it flowed well, which is all I really want. I don't really, I mean, you can be the best striking coach in the world, but some, for whatever reason, you could just not jam with them. And, um, and Perulo was definitely not that person. I, I, straight away kind of got the flow on and we worked a few things he adjusted a few things and it's giving me a few things to kind of bring back here and and think about and maybe work on do you have a piece, f favorite piece of gear from ruka well that's a really hard one um because there's so much especially the new season is amazing probably like my most worn thing is that t-shirt you're wearing <laughs> 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 basic t-shirt and it comes in white and wear those all the time probably has food because i'm in isolation i don't care and, <laughs> but something that i wear most that probably like the most of my like pad work videos and stuff um you'll see or training videos is the compression tights um they're amazing the female ones and the male ones are really cool too because they come in the the like one quarter short one that a lot of mma guys wear but yeah the tights and the um the rash guard from the compression range those are probably my most worn because they're the most comfortable things ever no cap and it's not just because i'm sponsored i would probably wear them anyway because they're so good <laughs> So you left California, made the trek back to Australia, and now you're locked up in a hotel room. Uh, almost done, correct? Yeah, I've got four sleeps to go. So it's like five days. But... Looks like the hotel, though, has some cool stuff for those quarantine members. I mean, stuff slid under the door, uh, dress-up stuff, photos. Have, have you taken advantage of any of that? No, and the one the one thing I was going to actually get involved in, so yeah, there's been bingo, there's been like a dress dress up competition. I don't really know <laughs> what the ins and outs of it was, but it was like become quarantine queen and I don't know what they use the um like I don't know, um, word for the king version. But yeah, it was like become a king or queen using only the equipment that's in this room. Which isn't a lot, by the way. Like, it's just a normal, like, not suite. It's a normal room. Like, just yeah. hotel room um, with a bathroom. That's it. Um, and I was like, are we just going to use all these, like, paper 
pieces of paper that you guys keep sending us or these paper bags that you guys keep sending us but that's like one thing that you get involved in the only thing i was actually going to get involved in was the yoga and it was yesterday and i thought it was at 10 but it was at 9 30. so i looked at it at 10 and i was like i missed it so <laughs> <laughs> i did see you had wine and, and wine and cheese though yes and then i could have linked in on the zoom apparently there was like a zoom phone call during that wine tasting i didn't um link into that but it, the only reason i didn't really was because i don't know it, it was because the people that were on my bus on the way here weren't really my kind of people <laughs> <laughs> and i was well, I'm a zoom call so i'm gonna probably just zoom call my friend and get her to go find some wine and act like she was doing a wine tasting <laughs> makes sense makes sense good food though like what have you had that uh, anything really good yeah like so last time i was in quarantine i got sandwiches for lunch and like frozen meals for dinner and it was trash and every morning i think we got um cereal um like little individual packets of cereal so it was not good quality so my standards were really low expecting coming in here and i like yesterday for lunch i got a um chicken burger with chips like, or with wedges and for dinner, I got um, butter chicken, which was amazing. Um, for breakfast, I got pancakes today, which is good. I mean, uh, yesterday, I think I got like some beans thing. Um, but yeah, it's different. Thank like, God every... you're by yourself, eh? <laughs> One thing. I think the beans are a little bit with all the chocolate that's going on in this room. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you're like extra excited to get out and start training with all the food you've been eating though for real i've like is there a scale in there um, oh, thank god and i don't because honestly like last mean i felt like i kind of kept my weight down i was i was doing dumb stuff like fasting till like three or so just so that i would lower my calorie intake so that the window was like a lot smaller and it would really only be when i was like under the influence of cannabis so i know i would definitely be going over my my calorie intake but um this time i was just kind of like because i don't have a microwave or anything they give you the food at the set times like 8 a.m for breakfast and about 12 p.m for lunch etc um and since i don't have a microwave to like reheat i kind of like i'm eating them as they come and then adding like extra calories into it by getting like uber eats and things then so honestly i don't even want to know and the the motivation to like train zero to be really zero. yeah and other I, than like, the I'm yoga other than yoga, yeah, like I, I like yoga and it's obviously like low impact, but that's not going to burn any calories, you know, no. getting your heart or anything and just the space, I guess it's just not. And I, I was told I've had this in, injury in my foot for like nearly two months. And um, obviously I just trained twice a day for like the last two weeks. So I definitely didn't give it any rest there. So I was my intention was to kind of like give it some rest in quarantine. And I've trained maybe like three times while I was well, <laughs> so bad, but all the rest has just been yoga and eating. So are you How able to request it? food? Like, like it, other than those set meal times, can you get room service as well? Yeah. It's like a limited menu of room service. Um, but you can order Uber Eats and, um, like oh, groceries. Man. That's trouble when you're stuck there. Yeah. So all you're thinking about between like that once lunch is finished to like whenever dinner is, um, all you can think about is what am I going to get? And then you just go through all the different apps. So like, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> what ones have the best deals and um, what you're going to get today. So, <laughs> so, so when you're out of quarantine, what's the first thing you're going to do other than breathe fresh air, obviously? Yeah, definitely breathe fresh air and um, go like stand in the sun, maybe lie in the sun and maybe go. I think I'll just feel like going for a run will make me feel a lot better. But then um, one of my girlfriends is going to pick me up and um, we're going to have a self-care day because my nice. eyebrows, nails and everything is just out of control in here. Unfortunately, can't request to get like a, a haircut or something, which is unfortunate. But um, but that'll be what I'm spending the day doing, probably getting myself back to general civilian life <laughs> countdown time uh so time wise after you get out you're going to be training you're going to be back to business when would you like to be back inside the cage literally as soon as possible i came out with not even a scratch so yeah. it was 
definitely like one of those things that I was like, okay, cool. Like I can come back as soon as possible. Um, the weight's never really an issue at 145. So I can always bring that down um, as soon as I get the call and um, all that sort of stuff. It was just sort of like, um, I know that uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before they announced uh, the LA card, which is amazing um, because they were definitely saying a lot um, while during our fight week that um, Mohegan will be definitely like obviously the most popular um, location for the next year, but it was sort of hearing, it was sort of sounding like it was going to be the only location. And um, now uh, obviously with an LA um, card being announced with a crowd that'll be phenomenal so I'm hoping the um, additive of hopefully a few more shows um, will give them the opportunity to keep all of us really active and kind of make up for lost time I mean we don't really miss out too much but only for once last year and obviously want to fight as many times as possible and we all have contracts that need to be looked after so so as soon as possible will definitely be the goal did, have you spoken with the Bellator brass? Like, did you speak with them post fight? Did Danny speak with them, your management, or or any of that kind of stuff? Uh, I didn't. Um, but yeah, I've just sort of like uh, left Danny to it, and um, I'll definitely start pushing him in the coming weeks as well, just because that's how it goes. But um, I kind of leave him when he gets quite busy. He's got a few guys um, on the card this weekend, and and a few people coming up and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, I think like now I've, I've waited enough time. It's been what, like three weeks, just over three weeks. So it's kind of now time to be like, all right, who do you guys want me to fight next and when, and can we do that as soon as possible for sure? Push, 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 push. She is Janae Harding. Cannot wait to see her back inside the cage. It was a fantastic performance, uh, resulting not the way you wanted it to go, but you truly looked awesome in there. Uh, hopefully, uh, you get through these next four days. Self care when you get out. Uh, any shout outs you wanna you make? Obviously, Ruka, your number one sponsor there, and and maybe the hotel quarantine food. <laughs> yeah, maybe Novotel. What is it? Novotel on Sydney, darling, or whatever. But yeah, <laughs> um, massive shout out to Ruka, obviously. Everyone that made that trip great as well. Everyone that had me um, at their gym, especially like Extreme Couture Syndicate, um, a lot of the guys in San Diego, 10th Planet San Diego, um, Premier Striking, all these guys, I really appreciate um, that just because while we're in it, I might as well thank everyone for that amazing trip that I had. And um, yeah, thanks to to Ruka Combat, um, My Sweat Deck, and all my usual guys that are on my team. Um, appreciate it. And see you guys soon. For sure. Thanks a lot, Janae. I appreciate your time. As always, it was nice to not be constrained to, you know, the 10 minutes. We, we got to yap a little bit more. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it.